How to open a swimming pool. For this swimming pool, we have a Hayward pump, sand filter, and we got a salt system by Hayward and it goes out to a heater, which is right there. So it's pretty basic. The line coming in, it's probably going to be the skimmer right there. And when you first open it, all your little stuff should be right in this basket. Everything that you should be putting back is right there for the equipment side. Now the pool side, it should be a skimmer basket, which is right up there. And that will have all the stuff that we need to put in on the pool side. So drain plug, you get the O-ring in there. You might not have an O-ring, you might have like a plastic flat piece of rubber. Put that on the bottom of the filter. Next is, we got a pressure gauge. Now if you take your pressure gauge out and it's not zero like that, uh, just get another one. Sometimes it gets stuck up here like 20. Uh, just get yourself another one. And I'll link this down below if you need another one. And we got the plugs. Now I have three of them here. And two of them are going to be on the Hayward pump. It's going to be on the side here and there's going to be one on the front. This one here, I am not sure yet. So put those on. Make sure that the gasket is a gasket there. You can put some grease on that. This one here, I can feel it's already greased up pretty good. And the one in the front. It's good and snug. Put her basket back in. Now make sure that this gasket all along the top here is cleaned off. It's all clean. And we'll put some grease on that too. Right now it's like really greasy. So I would suggest to put some grease on this. These here, same thing. You can take those all the way off like this. Put some grease on that and then screw it back on. Now if it doesn't go on easy like this, that means you're cross-threading it. Do both sides. Sand filter will turn to filter. Your pressure gauge. Make sure you have some Teflon tape on here. Now when you put the pressure gauge on, you got to be careful. You can't over tighten it. Um, looks like it happened here before. Homeowner looks like uh, they put some some sort of epoxy because these will crack if you over tighten this. So it just goes in. Again, don't cross thread it if it doesn't go in nice. Then make sure to take it out and redo it. So we just put it on. You don't want to tighten it too tight. There you see, that's good. And it's a common place to crack. Now, sometimes the salt cell will be out. Sometimes they take them out. They kind of suggest it, but we never take this style out. As long as you blow out all the water out of it, as long as there's no water sitting in it, it should be fine. But we'll end up taking this out and cleaning it. And I'll put a link right here to show you how to clean this salt cell. Now, for this plug I have, I'm not sure where it is. These plugs here are normally, this style here was on the Haywards before. We don't have a chlorinator. And that also looks like a chlorinator plug. But we do have a heater. And we'll see if it goes on there. So for the heater, I would suggest to get a gas guy in to start it and clean it. Sometimes they can catch on fire because of these, uh, all these leaves and stuff. Or smoke really bad anyway. And sometimes the critters get in there. So they come in, they clean everything all off. They'll clean the cobwebs. Uh, they should clean all these leaves off. Now this person had it covered for the winter time, but um, you never know what gets in there. It could be a nest in there, a mouse got in there, or chipmunk or whatever. 
So now the manifold where the water comes in this is the manifold. Right here is a plug underneath here for this one here. This one is the ray pack. So that's where that plug is going to be. Now I don't have an O-ring on that. So you might need some, oh, there's an O-ring. So if it again, if it leaks and just give a little tweak or some uh, Teflon tape, but we have to get everything running and see if anything leaks. So for this one here, that's where that plug goes. And uh, I'm just gonna do it hand tight for now. And if it leaks, I'll give it a tweak and make sure that these these are tight, all your connections. Now, if you don't have one of these tools, it's a must have, and I'll link it down below. Very adjustable. You make sure, just give a little tweak, each thing. This is my back wash right here. Yeah, it's a little loose. So you're gonna make sure everything's uh, on there. Should be hand tight, but I gave a little tweak extra with the with the tool. Okay, there's my backwash. So I'm gonna shut that off. Uh, hold it right here. Again, it could be hand tight, but I just give a little extra little tweak. Let's go. Do the front here, just a little tweak. It's good. Because if you do the ball valves too tight, then you can't shut these. Since we have a ball valve in front of here, so we can prime it, I'm gonna shut that. So it's closed. And when we go to fill that, then we can fill that right up instead of it draining right out. Got that, salt cell, same thing. Now, <laughs> you can use these tools on here. You're just, you just don't crank on it. Like these here, just a little, little tweak. You don't have to like, you're not crushing it with this thing. You're just giving it that little tweak. So I'll do both sides. Then I'm gonna show you how to do the pool side. If you have a safety cover, you just use the bar. You should have a bar that looks like this. off like that off I just take a long bit and you flip it upside down and then you can put it in the drill like that like that it fits right in down so we're gonna try to take it out so if you ever have a pin that's hard to take out it's because it's all like grit and the moment that you have a hard time spray some water or take a bucket of water spray it with a hose or whatever but just splash it in there and just slowly try to go up and down up and down try to get all the dirt out and it's pretty gritty so I would suggest that anyway take them all out eventually and uh, you can see all the sand and grit so you clean it all out, put a little bit of grease on there and put it back on. There you go. Once you get all the springs off and all the pins down, time to get the cover off. I'll link a video right above here how to take a safety cover off. Take all your winter plugs off. If you can't find it, like here I can see the water, I can see I can see the bottom, I can see the sides. If it's a new pool to you and you can't see the jets because the water is so black, what I do is I use a brush and brush the walls and you'll feel it if the, it could be a light, could be a jet. So as long as you can go all the way around, you need to brush the pool anyway. So you can sit there and brush the sides all the way around and then you'll run into the jet. So I got one jet there. Normally they're all in the same spots. So normally there's a step, there's a skimmer. So I'm assuming there's gonna be one over here somewhere or this side. 
Uh, on this side, same thing. It's going to be over here somewhere or the opposite side. So whatever winter plugs you have, take those off. If you see bubbles coming out like this, that's a good sign. You want to see that. Now the basic pool will have two. You might have more. There we go. Took the second winter plug out. This uh, bungee plug. For the skimmer, you should have a gizmo in there or one ice built up in there has something to crush. So we're gonna take that out. This pool has a uh, the flap, which is called a weir. We're gonna put that in. Now there's three different types. This just fits in the, the groove in the front, it goes in like that. So it can pull whatever's on the surface and pulls it right in. So put the basket in. Because the water is so cold and I use, most of the time I'll use granule shock, um, I grab a bucket, put water in it, and I heat it up. Now I'll link this down below, I use this for hot tubs also. But I just put a bucket, because a lot of times when we show up, there's the outside water is not on, plus the water is cold anyway. So to put granule shock in, we just can't throw it in the pool. It's not going to dissolve fast enough. Uh, I don't want it sitting on the liner. So what I do is get a big bucket, put my heater in, go do some other stuff on the pool, plug it in, get her up nice and hot, and then I can put the shock in and mix it and then put it in. So we got our water up to 104. Like I said, it's uh, I don't use liquid, I use granules. The water's high right now, you want to leave it like that because you're going to end up backwashing it. So instead of adding water, get a bucket of water. You're going to prime the pump. We're going to open up the ball valve. Just a bit. So we get a little bit of water in there. You can take a garden hose, put it in there, and you can fill up a little bit. Because when they built the pool, the hose is probably, there's probably a spot where it's really low. So as long as we fill that up. So this is the best way to prime it. If the pump's higher than the pool, you're going to have a harder time priming it. But if you have a ball valve, it's the best. Because we'll turn on the pump, then turn the, the ball valve on so it sucks it up. Okay, we got that full. Turn the pump on. Pull it right in. And you should see the antifreeze going in there. Now if it doesn't go right away, let it run for maybe three to five minutes and then do it again. Just keep on doing it, doing it, doing it until it starts moving. So when you get it going, just check everything that you just installed, like the plug, to make sure that they're tight. If they're dripping at all, just give it a tweak. So check everything. Heater 
and we got a little bit of a drip there so we're going to tighten that up there you go tighten it all up now i'll link down below all the tools that i use the water's cold so make sure that it's off we don't need the heater on right away so it should be off from closing and the gas should be off too from closing if you have a salt system just make sure it's off just the water's just too cold you don't need it on and right after now all that brush the pool next you're going to skim the whole pool and anything that any leaves or any other debris that you can see you want to scoop it first with the net Keep skimming the pool, get any organics on the floor. So I have not seen the pool today. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use a blower, blow all the stuff around the pool away. I did put the robot in yesterday. Let's see what it looks like. Not bad. So we'll just skim a bit and we'll brush again. And we'll test the water. And we have to do a backwash. Clean out your skimmer. If there's anything. There's nothing in there because water's too high. So we'll put the jets on. So for this jet, there's the skimmer. And the jet's right there. So I'm going to face it that way. Just cresting the top top enough that's just gonna go and it's gonna push towards there. And the jet that's over there, I'm gonna direct it over this way. So I want it to come around this way. So I'll just go like this and then continue on to there. So there's many different jets. This one here is like a sideways. This one's straight up, just straight. For this one, because I want it to go to that skimmer. I'm going to use this one here, so it just goes whoosh, that way. So I want to tighten that enough that I can still, you know, it's not going to move, but I can still move with my fingers. Once the water starts going through there, it'll be solid. It'll just push out like this. So I can redirect it as it's going. Again, this one here, I want to, I want to get it over in here, push it that way. If you have a cartridge filter or a DE filter, you're going to clean that. Um, sand filter I have right here, so we're going to turn to backwash. This is on the opposite side. Now this one has a ball valve because the top valve have, probably has been leaking. So right now it's shut. So we make sure that's open. You might not have this, but if you had a pool guy that comes in, normally instead of replacing this, just put a ball valve there, it's a lot cheaper. And then we're gonna turn it back on to backwash. First backwash of the season, so we're gonna run it a lot longer. Now on the sand filter, there's gonna be a sight glass. You could start backwashing until all the green's gone. But the first backwash or first cleaning, do it really well. So you turn it off, then turn it to rinse.
and turn it back to filter and then we'll turn it back on. Next we're going to test the water and see what we need to put in. So we got pH is a little low, alkalinity is a little low, calcium is a little bit low. Calcium you could put in the next day. If you're not sure how much to put in for each chemical, just put in a little bit because it's a, you know, this pool here is a standard size, 1632. Uh, for alkalinity, it's it was pretty low, so I probably need more buckets than one. But that's all I have right now, and if that's all you have, uh, throw one bucket in and then retest in a few hours or just tomorrow. As long as you're putting something in. So if alkalinity is low, we're going to be doing something with one bucket. Because this water is so cold, the stuff here that I'm using to boost the alkalinity, uh, it will also affect the pH, and the pH should go up a bit, but I'm not putting that much in. Because the pH is low and the alkalinity, uh, I'm just going to raise the alkalinity up because it's actually a little bit lower than the pH is at 7.4. Uh, you want it, you know, 7.4 to 7.8. Now, it's not too, too bad, but alkalinity is a lot lower, and it's cloudy. We're going to put this in for now, and this is almost like a powder, and this is so cold that this powder, you know, some of it will dissolve, but a lot of it will just go underneath. The robot is going, so it might move it around, but we're still going to put some hot water in it. Most people's tea kettles are not that big, so that's why I use the bucket and the heater, because I get a lot more water heated faster than I'm doing other stuff. So there's a five-gallon pail. Put some water in same as i did with the shock and we're going to shock it today too so i just use this little heater and i'll link everything down below that you use here so see what the temperature's at so we're at 102 which is good so we're gonna uh, put some in a little bucket here and throw that in here we have our mixing pitcher i'll link this down below too because it's meant for chemicals so it's not going to be eaten away so i'm just going to pour some water into here and then that way I can mix the chemicals. But if I was putting more, I would use another bucket. I would take that out, put in another bucket, get that heated up, and then use this, mix it up, throw it in the pool. Next, we're gonna do the shock. Same amount. Stir it up. If you have any questions on how to close your pool, Send a comment down below.